Hello. I'm having a bit of trouble with one of my V2000 machines. It's a Grundig 2x4 Super and the eject mechanism, which is normally fairly reliable on these, is not working properly because I think the drive belt's slipping. Let's just uh, see what happens if I try to put a tape in. It's, yes, yeah, not happy. So let's have a look at that. Oh, and also we'll look at another drive belt in here that I've replaced recently. Okay, to get to the eject mechanism, we need to take the bottom off. So I've unplugged AV connectors from the back there. I need to remove this slider, which is a picture sharpness, undo the bottom screws, and then we can get to the bottom of the deck. Don't think I need to get to the top of the machine on this occasion, but it might well be that I do later. Right, here's the drive belt that I think is slipping. Let's uh, just try to power the machine again and confirm that. Right, the belt is not rotating, but I can feel the motor spinning. So it is slipping. Of course, that can also happen if the mechanism jams. So I'm just um, proving that it's not jammed. I don't believe it is. Okay, so here's the drive belt. It's a very awkward size though. Okay, there's the belt. So it's very thick. It's about seven millimeters wide. I think it's around about 33 millimeters internal diameter and about 1.6 millimeters thickness. Quite a belt. Now, uh, Graham of uh, GB Audio has kindly uh, made up a belt for me, which is uh, our best stab at uh, a replacement for this. Uh, of course, it depends if I gave him good dimensions. Let's see how it goes. So, it does seem a bit tighter. It's the same width. Thinner though, but as so long as it uh, transmits power from one part to another, that's all we need. Let's give it a spin. It's not as though this part's going to have any effect on, for example, the uh, performance of the video recorder, either audio or video. All it needs to do is go round and uh, transmit power from the motor to the uh, eject system. Well, it's on there. It looks promising enough. Let's see what happens if I switch on the machine. It's still spinning, but I think, you know... The problem is not, yes, I don't think the problem is the belt now. We've got something else wrong here. There's something else wrong here. The old belt did need replacing because it's full of cracks. But there's something else going on here that the mechanism is not detecting its endpoint properly. There's a switch here, which is made, I think, when that slider comes across. Let's just look at that. Right, and these wires, there's a black and a yellow wire, they will go through to one of these connectors, and these connectors here are notoriously unreliable. So it could be that I have a problem with one of those connectors. I'm sure this switch is working just fine. If I meter the uh, wires to that. Right. They go to a small PCB at the front, I think, and then on through a multi-way cable, one of these multi-way cables to these notoriously bad connectors here that always fall apart. I don't actually see any of these connectors falling apart, though. I just sort of reseated them. Let's see if that helps. Let's power it up. No, it's still struggling. So if I back this off, it'll go, it'll drive that way, and it should stop at the end, and it won't. 
Power it up, prove that. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. I think it's this connector here that's associated with that. Let's check it. There you go, the connector's split, so it's probably not pushing on hard enough. Let's just see if I can meter between here and that switch. Right, both sides of the switch you get into these two contacts here. So I need to uh, strap this together. Sometimes you can get away, depending which one it is and whether there's enough space, you can hold it together with a cable tie. In the end one, there's actually a lot more space on this than most. Okay, so that cable, uh, that connector is now held together properly. Let's see if by some miracle it will now detect the out position properly. No. Let me just do a test of the switch that it makes okay when I manually slide that uh, along. May not be making. I'm sure it is. It is making. Maybe it's not making reliably. It does seem the most gentle of touches. So maybe I can... Um, we spring that a tiny bit and clean it as well. Right, it should make any moment now. Here it goes, yeah. Back it off, yeah. So that switch is working fine and it's making it up to the connector here. So either there's a fault with this board or somewhere else completely in the machine. Um, or this connector is still giving me trouble. The other thing I'm going to do is respring the contacts in here a bit. Try that. So switch it on. No, it's still not stopping at the end point there. So the uh, offending connector has been um, fitted with a cable tie and uh, epoxy resin. But I suspect, from my experiments I've done so far, that the problem will remain. And the reason is that uh, some of these signals come through to the top of the board where there's another connector of a similar type. And I think that's the one that's probably fallen apart on this occasion. But let's put this together, test it, and then go to the top if necessary. OK, I'll uh, power it up and I suspect it'll again drive there and just make a horrible noise. Yes. Back that off again. Right, so remove the screws at the back. Okay, I do find the black ones split more than the coloured ones, but aha, there's green ones split. That might be the problem. Though actually, the connect connections for the signals I'm looking for, I do believe, come out on this red one, BM1. But that seems to be okay. Okay, let's try to repair this one. So there's not as much room in here to stick a cable tie because there's so many connectors. So I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful about how I uh, repair this one. Okay, so I've put uh, a bit of wire wrapped around there to hold it in place while I now add some glue to uh, give it some strength. The signal which tells the uh, machine that it's reached the eject position goes through this board via one diode to a particular connection here uh, and I've metered it does get into the cable and it then goes into the front panel here which is where the CPU is so I'm going to check that the connection is good there but uh, it's very chaotic wiring so I'm going to have to just take it off and have a look. I've traced the connections from the connector here which handles the signals for the cassette out switch all the way to the front panel where the CPU is and they're fine. So you'd say well maybe we've got a CPU fault. But I have to say that's unlikely because I've wound the tape in by hand now and that's play. Fast forward. Stop. Rewind. 
stop. You know, that looks like a working machine. And even eject, but it just doesn't know when to stop at the end of eject. So if I hit the eject button, which is labelled cassette, it will eject, but it won't stop at the end. Oh. <laughs> Put the tape in. Play. Eject. The machine's working. How old is that? Right, I think we're more or less there now. So the problem seems to have been that the mechanism hadn't done a full load and eject cycle and something somewhere wasn't quite right. But now it's working reliably. However, we have a problem with a lack of torque on the eject mechanism. And the drive belt I've been sent by GB Audio is the right size, but a little bit thin. And it also sometimes sticks there at that part of the eject cycle. So the belt that's in there is old and cracked and needs replacement. This is the right size, but not quite thick enough to provide enough torque. So we're having a bit of a sticking issue on there. So it's not in any way functionally not working, it's just struggling with that drive belt. If I fit the uh, GB Audio drive belt in here, let's try it now. It's better with that, isn't it? But still, it can stick. Uh, I wonder if I could add both. That's something I've never tried before. I'd imagine this one would be thrown off, but let's give it a whirl. That's not going to work. They're going to compete for space on the pulley, so you can only have one belt or the other. So there we have a difficulty with uh, the loading motor drive belt. It's a very thick belt, and so I've not had too many of these fail, but it is a problem uh, finding a source for that belt. Right, the other belt I had to replace recently was this. This is the capstan belt, and you can see maybe it's cracking up and stretching. So I was getting some audio wear and flutter. Very awkward to get to. So what I did was undo these screws and these screws here. I think I left one slightly done up and slacken, uh, took out the other two. And slid these sheets. There's an insulator sheet and a metal sheet there. Slid those out. And you could just about then wiggle it and jiggle it so you can get this belt to go across the uh, capstan motor, the capstan flywheel and the FG generator which is like a little motor in reverse uh, so that it, it was just about possible to get that in there and then reassemble all this, slide this in. I mean this insulator is obviously very important. It, it was just fiddly. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. Right, since I don't have a better belt than this one at the moment I'll reassemble that. Remember, of course, to uh, refit this uh, rather awkward um, sharpness control. You have to sort of find the slider for it. This screening can's a little fiddly. Uh, you need to make sure that this um, insulator at the back doesn't get scrunched up by the back of this, because if you if you did, you could have a short between the motor driver PCB and the screening can. Sometimes there's an earthing contact on here. This one seems to be missing. Well, now I've just connected up and do a final test. It's got this rather non standard uh, connector for AV connections on this. It's got normal AV signals, it's just that they're presented on a stupid DIN plug. And uh, now we'll just uh, test the machine out. And that seems to be working okay. So it's working satisfactorily at the moment, but uh, a new loading belt would be handy. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about the Grundig 2x4 Super V2000 video recorder. 
coming up shortly the contents of this great big box so uh, do remember to like share and especially subscribe and you'll get to see a lot more content on audio and video technology such as this bye for now <laughs>